think we're on. I think I'm already on. Let's see here. Yep, we're live. I probably should have muted that, huh? All right, let's. All right. Let's get that link going out. Chat, chat. There it is. Good evening, everyone. Is anyone even here? Let's see here. Where, where are my windows at? I'm rushing here to get started. And I think it's right here. Just a moment. Okay. Hey, all right. So uh, I see Billy Hoyle in the chat. So I see I must be live then, huh? Just, I didn't even shave. Hey all, let's go. Okay, how y'all doing? So uh, I'm not, I usually kind of semi-prepare <laughs> for these things. I did not do so. I'm like, you know, I'm, people ask me all kinds of questions on Twitter and I have no, uh, instead of answering everybody and let's kind of like discover it together. Uh, let's see here, I gotta pull up this. I've got like a hundred windows open. Mm -hmm. Hundred things going on. Here's the here's the link. Okay, let's pull this over here. I'll pop this into chat. All right, there it is. Okay, so there's the link. Uh, if you if you're viewing, you just jumped in. Please say hi. Uh, hit something in the chat just so I know that we've got an audience. First of all, tell me is you know everything working? The audio, the visuals, everything cool. Uh, I feel like I'm a little more comfortable, but I'm still learning. I uh, want to, of course, shout out to my wife, Dorothy, who did the opening track. Uh, she is a producer, so if you like her music and you're looking for tracks, hit me up. And uh, my daughter, Juliana, who did the opening graphic. All right. Hey, what's up, people? Oh, that's a tough one. Gerwinder. Gerwinder. Uh, Philippe. All right. Everything looks good. Everything's working well. Cool deal. Uh, all right. So I put it on Facebook. I put it on Twitter. I think I put it on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, make sure you get that chat number or that chat Excel. Sorry, start, say that again. Make sure you get that Excel link. Uh, it's actually a Google Sheet. It's right at the top. Uh, hello from Portugal. Very cool. Uh, appreciate everyone. Wait, Portugal, isn't it really early in the morning? I guess is it with six out, eight hours different around there? Okay, that's fair. Uh, all right, well, let's dig in. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, jump over here real quick and what I'm actually pulling up is my email but I don't want to uh, let me pull this up real quick give me a second here it is okay we're gonna jump back over here getting used to this setup still okay all right so this is what I just got uh, from this this is the statement from the NBPA so I'm gonna copy that into here All right, didn't take the formatting. So let's, uh, I wonder if word wrap will work. I don't know, let's see, will that work? And is there a word wrap setting? All right, well, maybe not. Um, I'm sure there is, but I don't know it. If anyone knows the word wrap, anyone know the word wrap for uh, Google Sheet, where that is? Word wrap, word wrap. 
Like I said, I did not plan anything ahead of time. We're just jumping on live. Text wrapping. That looks like something, right? Yes, no. Try it again. Come on, give it to me. There it is. All right, sweet. Now, hopefully this will work for you all. Bear with me. Okay, you can kind of see that. Let me know if that's readable, legible. What's up, Corey? Big follower on Twitter. Lakers guru, very cool. Uh, I hope the Lakers are rested enough. Yeah. What's up, Adam? Uh, once again, a Clippers fan. I know if you're going to... Yeah, well, hopefully. I hear you, Adam. Uh, that's uh, I, Adam. Adam's a former SBC student, so if you're an SBC, shout out. Uh, so the Lakers and the Heat are sort of on the bad end of this, but we're going to get into that. Uh, so here's what the note says. This is uh, obviously we saw from Shams Trani of the, of the Athletic, and then we saw of uh, Adrian Wojnarowski uh, of ESPN. I don't know who had it first, but around the same time they both said oops, that there's a tentative agreement. So the uh, NBPA, which is the Players Association, the union, put out this statement, which is in the Excel sheet. Uh, again, I'll just pop it in one more time for those who want to see it. There it is. That's the link. That's where I have all of the sheets of each uh, stream, and you can go back and, and look at streams and look at the sheets, etc. So, uh, what's up, D sir? Uh, okay, so it says the board of the board of player representatives of the National Players Association has tentatively approved a start date of December 22, 2020, for the 2021 NBA season and a 72 game schedule. Additional details to be negotiated and the NBA PA is confident that the parties will reach agreement on those remaining issues relevant to the upcoming season. So we have a few things. For one, it, the word tentative, right? That's that's the word that jumps out there. So tentatively means this could go uh, blanks up. It could go bad, right? So that means that this is not 100%. It does say that, um, that they're confident that it confident basically they think it'll work out now what's the issue so the issues are one the the world <laughs> the world we're in right now uh virus etc uh hopefully we're good enough and survive uh the pandemic and and good enough and and we can have a season so that's that's one uh, but that's kind of the I know, obviously that's the most major one. But like in in the, in terms of the agree uh, of whatever they're discussing, that's out of everyone's control. The bigger issue is uh, the money, obviously. That's what this is really saying. They're banking on that they'll be able to work out the issues. So there are several, 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 several issues to work out. Um, a Slack channel, you know, Mark. I do have a Discord. Um, Discord. Uh, I am going to get that for you guys right now. And I don't usually do this. So at some point, I'm going to paywall this, kind of, maybe, via Patreon. Uh, for this early stage of trying to get things going, maybe I'll, I'll just share it right now. And so if you happen to be lucky here, this invite will not work later. So if you're watching the stream at a different time, this is basically a 24-hour link. So if you're watching this at a later date, this won't work. So let me see if I can get that going here. Invite people, server settings, server boost. You know, it's been a while. Am I in my own server? Yes. Give me a second. Uh, invite people. Or send a server invite copy. Okay, I think this is it. Let's try it now. Did that work? Okay. I don't know if you can see that in the chat, uh, but if you want to join just for the next 24 hours, okay, I just see someone slid in. So we may have a nice, okay, there you go. Uh, so I'll say hello. Hello, newcomers. I'm in my, I'm in the Discord right now. So hello, newcomers. Uh, go to About Us and tell us who you are. Okay. Uh, so cool. We've got let, let's get the discord going. Uh, there are a lot of friends. I have already in the discord uh, We've been kind of run, up and running for kind of in beta for a couple months or so uh, mostly sports business classroom for uh, some friends 
uh, there's a whole bunch of sections where we can have some discussions about NBA and, and all that. Keep it clean and, you know, let's stick to the avoid politics and all this stuff. There's too much going on. I, I was going to stream yesterday, but I just couldn't get past uh, trying to make sense of the world and keeping track of the election. I feel like we have at least an idea of where it's going and hopefully uh, nothing crazy will happen while we're live streaming because uh, I got to put business first. And this is uh, also fun, right? This is the joy of what I get to do is cover the NBA. Uh, so I'm going to, yeah, th there's a bunch, uh, a bunch of people popping into the Discord right now. What's up, Devin? Like I said, the Discord is only good. The invite is only good for 24 hours. And I think if you see the stream later, you can't even see the chat. Uh, I am working on a, a, a little bit of a facelift because this is all new to me. Uh, this is like my fourth stream, I think. So uh, first without shaving. Uh, but I do have someone who's helping me. They're going to do uh, some, help me with some layouts potentially. And you'll be able to see the chat for later so you can kind of see where the conversation went and all that kind of cool stuff uh, but let's get back to the questions here okay so um, we have the board of Re uh, they basically have that kind of language right so what are the issues the money so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to Twitter kind of here and let's see I think I have that right here give me a moment like I said I didn't come in we're just sort of winging it tonight. I usually come in pretty prepared. All right, here we are. This is from Shams. So I'm going to pull up Shams' Twitter. There it is. It should come up. Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so this is the one. This is what I wanted to point out. This is what we want to discuss. Now, from my experience, uh, most reports are rounded. Uh, so he's saying here, this is the key tweet right here. The NBA, this is from Shams Charani of The Athletic. The NBA and MBPA are discussing a minimum of 2% annual growth in the salary cap and luxury tax for the duration of the collective bargaining agreement. Cap is expected to be $109 million this offseason. So what does that mean? Because that the language there is very vague if you, if you take it literally, and that's kind of my job, is to break it down. A minimum. So I'm going to copy this here. This is from Shams. I'm going to go back to our Shams tweet. Okay. Oops. All right. So what he's saying here is that it's going to be 109. So let's go. I'm going to pull in the cap as it is right now. Make sure you can see this. Let me scroll down. Okay. There you go. Okay. There's the cap right now. This is 2019-20. This is the salary cap. What he's saying here is that it's going to be 109. So what I'm going to assume, and I could be wrong, is that it's going to be flat and that he's rounding. Uh, and that the tax stays flat as well. So let's do uh, luxury tax. Call the luxury tax. Right now it's at it's easier to copy, copy and paste. And so that would be the same. That would mean that the hard cap, when applicable, so I'll just put an asterisk, asterisk, when applicable, is going to be 138. I left copy and paste a lot easier. Okay, bear with me. Okay, that's where we are now. Okay, let's pull this up, see how we're doing. All right, so. Uh, he also says 2% annual growth. Okay, so I had already, maybe three months ago, kind of gone back. The original projection, uh, original projection was 115 and 139. So teams had sort of geared their books and their strategy before the shutdown with this projection in mind, right? They expected there to be this much space uh, or this much cap and that that would be the line. I don't think many teams expected to have cap room this summer, very few, but this mattered. This mattered a lot um, because they budgeted most teams to be under the tax. So if you're bringing in enough money, it's worth it for almost every team to pay anywhere between 90% of the cap to upwards of right to the line. 
and you'll see teams across the board spend in that range. Uh, and then there'll be two or three teams that are willing to spend into the tax. And then you'll even see teams that, it, most of those teams are contenders, but you might see some teams that were contenders a couple years ago and are sort of transitioning into something else. Maybe the Thunder are a good example of that. They were a tax team this last year uh, and they were very competitive and I'm very happy for the success they had. It was a great story, but I don't think they came in expecting that. Uh, and them being a taxpayer in the end is kind of surprising. Uh, that I really thought they'd make a small move to get under, and they, they actually didn't. Uh, they stayed over. Uh, but a lot of teams uh, in markets that can't afford it because they're smaller markets, and then also specifically in this climate, are were probably going to want to steer away from being in the tax. Teams like the Lakers and you know, to, uh, at the top who have a chance to win and, and uh maybe the Rockets and you know teams that feel like they're on the cusp might be willing to go into the tax. But by and large, I think a good portion would avoid it. But that line is now a lot lower. Uh, and teams knew this going into, you know, as of March, maybe February, well, sorry, March, April, when it started to kind of dawn on people what was happening, it became clear that next year would uh, be a problem. And then it stabilized and we kind of got a sense like, okay, we can have an NBA season. They made up some of the money. Uh, and things sort of evened out. So um, I think that uh, that's kind of, that's where things have, th th well, let's put it this way. The teams understood that the, ca the tax was probably going to be about 133. So they know this, but it doesn't change the, the books that they already had, right? Like all the players that they have. Uh, it's hard for a lot of teams to, like if the Celtics, if Gordon Hayward opts in, they're in the tax and, um, it, it's it, being $7 million over and the, it, that's a lot because it's a progressive tax. So, uh, how are we all doing on the chat? I'm just checking in We with me. I want to make sure that we keep the chat going a little bit so that I make sure that people are listening and, and mostly to make sure that technically I haven't dropped off or the stream crashed or something like that. Uh, still trying to figure it out. So there we are doing good, doing it. All right, cool. Um, Okay, so where were we? Uh, and and a, you know, a hard cap isn't really the point here. It would probably be in the, probably in the 146 mil range. I'm not gonna compute that right now. Uh, but this is kind of what was, what the books are, well, what the books, what the plan was, right? Based on the books, right? That's each team's books. This is reality. So it's going to hurt some of what teams can spend. We're going to get into a couple of issues here, but we're going to look at the future now. This is what I find to be interesting because it's very vague by the tweet because it says the NBA and MBPA are discussing a minimum of 2% annual growth in the salary and luxury tax. How, how is that computed? He's not saying this, and this is what I need to understand, and I don't know the answer to yet, and this is something that we'll find out uh, it's it's really too early for me to even uh, like write on or anything for Bleacher Report. But if we were to take a look and say 1.02, right? You're talking about that kind of growth, and we'll do the same here, right? So this would be again. This is looking forward. Okay. Hard cap is always when applicable. We'll put in here. Uh, sign and trade. Uh, full. Well, let's just do. Uh, taxpayer MLE and BAE. Some of these things are defined, and I should probably get this here. Hold on a moment. Here. Let me get this and copy it into this sheet here. And just a moment. This is what I usually do ahead of time before we stream. Uh, but since we're sort of uh, winging it, we're winging it. Mm -hmm. All right paste that in there and I think we're good okay cool so if you want to go to these links uh, at the top you'll see basketball insiders is where I publish the player salaries uh, the second one is is Larry Coons FAQ which is really your guideline uh, and then the CBA itself so if you want to look at any of these things these are the links that we refer to if you want to follow me on Twitter uh, but more importantly to me <laughs> if uh, you have a chance uh, Venmo and Patreon uh, if you have a little bit of extra money and you want to thank me for what I'm doing and uh, help for some of the effort and uh, take, I got three kids, you know, three daughters, uh, all teenagers. So, you know, 
uh, if you want to go into Venmo and I want to thank some of the people who have really been awesome and done that if you want to sign up for Patreon that's awesome and then of course uh, I gave you that link and we'll give it one more time uh, let me copy that discord link one more time in case you missed it okay cool deal let's keep going I'll even pop it in here and this is discord discord only good for 24 hours okay let's get back into what we were discussing so we have this notion here I'm gonna move it over here eh, I like it where it is okay so uh, but it, but it's that's the thing is he's saying a minimum of 2% so what they're saying is that number one the cap will not drop if, based on income lost and that's really crucial uh, basically what you take is you take BRI which is basketball related income and if you go to Larry Coons FAQ you'll see what that entails but the core of it is uh, essentially your your network your networks which is local and national uh, and then it's uh, fan based income which is a real real issue this year now they're gonna do 72 games and there's some talk of maybe some fans in arenas uh, socially distant where it's acceptable acceptable how do you spell that state I don't know if I got that right where it's kosher is that okay where it's cool where it's cool we'll go with cool where it's cool state by state city by city okay all right so these are some of the variables so what's going to happen is flat out BRI is going to drop thank you Devin I yeah I know how to spell I, I I've lost my the spell checkers have killed me I, my spelling used to be great now I'm I'm less of a good speller but it's all good um, right so Devin's mentioning about luxury boxes there's talk of luxury boxes this talk of actual people in the arena a certain distance uh, like in the lower bowl there's all kinds of questions that we don't have the answers to uh, and I'm not even, you know, I'll try to scan Twitter as we as we stream to just see if anything is is, is going on. I, I want to make sure that we have the latest info. Uh, and I'm just taking a peek right now. Uh, all right, nothing crazy so far. So you know the 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 main question is uh, that two percent, right? What does that mean? Uh, It could be more, right? So, what I think is important is to understand that the CB, that the, the cap and the tax won't drop. We know that at a minimum, that it's going to be for 20, 21, 22, it's going to be this number. So, this would be at a minimum. That's the key part right there. So, I don't know that we know what the cap will be, but I will say that uh, the pro projection. This is like the post shutdown projection was essentially what I was using, what a lot of people were using, is that things would sort of just be frozen for a year and then jump back to normal. So it would go back to this, which I think we had above. And 139, 123, 123. Right? So it could still get to that, but it does mean that if a team. The original plan was 125. Did I put in that in? Yes. Yeah. So the original projection was 125. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And I, it was like 140. Uh, I forget the exact number, but let's just put 149. 140. Let's see. Let's just do 18%. No, 1.2% is it? Times 1.18. Yeah, about that. That's just an estimate. So this is what was planned, and so we're obviously not going to get there. Um, I wonder if there's going to be, you know, some sort of upper bound on it. I, I, I don't know if there's a limit. I don't know why they would limit. So uh, it could rise. So I think what we're saying is that we've put a floor in to make sure that the cap doesn't drop any further because, you know, that's very dangerous for teams based on what I discussed before, especially with luxury tax. 
It could hurt teams that were planning on spending in 2021, which is a huge free agent year. We have Giannis and uh, Kawhi potentially, Paul George and Drew Holiday and Spencer Dinwiddie and Victor Oladipo uh, and a few others. I, 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 and LeBron, I think, potentially as well. So uh, teams need to have a certain amount of cap room. It's going to be lower. We all knew it was going to be lower. Um, but it's going to be lower for everyone. And, and uh, so there are some caveats here. So it's not like a, a disaster. So let's get uh, into the next set of questions. So what would that be? So for one, we don't know exactly what the money is going to be. But we know what the, the floor of it will be. But we also have this escrow issue. So let's talk about that briefly. All right, so the way that the NBA normally works, normal escrow is 10%. Okay, so if you have, let's pull up a player, and it was brought to me, let's see, David just mentioned LeBron, so we might as well go straight to the, to the top as far as uh, one of the top earners and then obviously one of the top players. And we'll just copy and paste real quick. So if we look at LeBron, for 2019-20, he should have given up this much in escrow, normal escrow. Now, LeBron has a different pay schedule, so his this may not exactly apply to him. It will apply to him at some point. He will have to give up this money. His pathway of giving back that money is a little different than everyone else, uh, just based on his pay schedule. So, But the money will be given back. Uh, normally, this much would have been withheld from his check, okay? And what that is, is escrow is money that, instead of the, the Lakers paying him 37, 4, 3, 6, 8, 5, 8, 10 percent of that goes to the league to hold on to in an account. And then at the end of the year, they do the math and they determine the BRI split, right? This is the protector of the BRI split which is roughly 50%. Reality is, is it's 49 to 51%, but we call it 50, 50 for the sake of ease. Maybe one day I'll do a, a stream on the actual math of that, but it's not really important if it's 50.3 or 50.8 or 49 point whatever. Uh, so what's gonna happen this year though, is that, uh, well, you know, this is, you know, Ma Mark's mentioning California state tax, that's a whole other thing. Like if you dig into it, like LeBron has to pay, LBJ has to pay, let's see, state, you know, federal, state taxes, agent fee. Then he pays what, like uh, 1.5 mil for his, you know, his body, uh, his physical, you know, what do you call it? Physical uh, therapy team. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. Um, so you can see like very quickly that money drops down real quick, right? Uh, but, but let's get into some of like what happened this year. So this was normal. Uh, then the shutdown rose to about 25%, rose to 25%. Yeah, Bronny's tuition at, at Sierra Canyon. Thanks, Lyman Jan. That's a whole nother thing. Yeah, although, you know, who knows if they're even charging tuition for, for Bron, for Bronny. I mean, I don't know how that works. Um, I don't know if they can do athletic scholarships at this age. I, don't, I have no idea how that works. Uh, I should know how that works because uh, I have kids who play basketball. So, you know, it would be nice if, uh, if they did have their tuition paid. That would be very helpful. Um, okay, so let's focus on, on this. So 25%. This is what LeBron was responsible for. Uh, this would be 2019-20 actual escrow. I'll just put in, you know, uh, you know, ballpark. I'm not gonna say that's exactly what it was for LeBron. It's actually a little more complex, but let's just kind of go with it. Um, so you could see that's a, that's kind of a big deal, right? That's a lot of money uh, that he's giving back. Not to mention, uh, <laughs> I gotta respond to a text here. Some very cool stuff. Uh, I'll respond after, but um, 
some cool stuff. People are happy. Uh, I got I'm getting some few texts. People are happy uh, about the uh, the return of basketball. All right. So the shutdown. So here's the problem. If the cap, if the money is dropping off next season by 40 percent because no fans and and yes we discussed that there may be some fans but let's just go with that right so then we're reducing the number of games um i i would say that it's probably safe to say there's a lot of other lost money throughout in bri um, hard, uh, you know, I'll, we'll know, we'll know more, uh, later on this, frankly, on this, we'll have a better idea, uh, when the final, when the cap is set, and, you know, I assume we'll know more, <laughs> uh, and the league informs, the, uh, let, let's just put it this way, we don't know the exact math, because the NBA is only going to share so much, and under normal circumstances, they share more. I don't know what they're going to share here. That's just flat out. <clears throat> so we're going to make our best, excuse me, to make sense of what's going on. Uh, the shutdown was 25%. If they prop up the cap, we're talking 30 to 35, to, let's call it 30 to 40% escrow. Under norm, In the normal animal of this, like it, like if let's just call it 40 percent like if they lose 40 percent escrow would need to be about 40 40 percent if not more about 40 percent right because they're splitting the money so if the nba is losing 40 percent the players have to lose 40 percent so that would be in the neighborhood for lebron of that let's do that correctly though Right. This would be a 40%, but let's also do 50% because it could be worse, right? Like it, things could go worse than they expect. Massive escrow at 40%, worse at 50%. So if you think about it, this is what this is about. Nope, what this is about this it's not it's tentative parties will reach agreement on the remaining issues all these issues are the issues that we're talking about but we had an issue with a december start versus january start and so when we talk bri the bri wasn't really going to change directly um, with a later start it would, but not crazy. Because the network deals are more or less flat. They're more or less set, right? Are basically set in, 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 uh, in a schedule. Uh, going in, the NBA knows how much they're going to get for the coming year. But the networks were not happy. And wanted to, wanted Christmas. Christmas is, is is huge for them. Wanted Christmas. Let me just type a few things in here. So they wanted Christmas. They didn't want to compete with the Olympics. So like, TV is all about ratings, right? So the NBA owns Christmas as far as ratings. Uh, they don't want to compete with football. They don't want to compete with the Olympics. And if they if they finish in uh, September, that's a problem. They finish in August. Uh, so there, there was this push and pull on getting this to work. So uh, the players basically said at the top, and, and I'm going to paraphrase and summarize, and some of this is sourced from people I've spoken to, and some of this is sourced from other media sources, of which I, you know, some of them are like uh, Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN or Shams and then Mark Stein and any other, uh, I, I don't know, off the top of my head, whoever, whomever, whoever that I happen to hear in passing or see on Twitter, uh, but some of it is from people I've spoken to who would be in the know. And it's like, 
the players and the teams, like the, the front office staffs, the coaching staffs, no one's happy about the idea of, of returning this early. I, I shouldn't say that. Eight teams that have been off since March are thrilled to be come back. They want to come back right away. Uh, and even the teams that didn't make the playoffs that were in the bubble briefly, probably really happy to come back. But the last eight teams, especially like the Lakers and the Heat and you know, probably the Nuggets and uh, uh, who did they, they play the Celtics, like those teams didn't get enough rest flat out. Uh, so whatever, but there was all this pressure, and given that LeBron is sort of a tentpole of the NBA, he's someone you had to appease. And so, how did they compromise? Well, uh, it was on this escrow, and I, again, this is still tentative, uh, and, and it's not. Um, I wouldn't say it's any of this is set in stone, uh, but I don't know the exact escrow percentage that they've agreed to. But um, if does someone see that reported yet? Do they have? Uh, has anyone reported that? It's kind of tricky because I can't really stream and then also scan Twitter the way I would like. Um, and I want to make sure that that what we're getting here is uh, the most la the latest information. Um, I don't see any. Um, okay, I don't see anything in my inbox. So okay, so what I would say is this. Um, let's say 18%. So I think it's, is that Devin putting in, so no bubble, 286 days since they played bubble to no playoffs, 129, uh, conference finals, 86. These are, this is very helpful. Uh, it's in the chat, but, uh, basically it's been in the neighborhood of 72 games for the Lakers, uh, 72 days rather for the Lakers and the heat. And, uh, and 286 for the teams like, uh, you know, the Hawks and everybody who missed the playoffs. Wow. So, you know, there's a wide range. And, and there's also a wide range team by team and what their desires are, right? Like, I'm sure the Lakers would like a little time as a team uh, and the Heat. And I'm sure that um, other teams are like, let's go do it. So you have differences in ownership and you have different you know, in teams and their motives, differences in the players. But let's say 18%. I don't know the exact reason. And I heard it was for two years. I don't know if it's the exact two years. This is just rough estimate based on reports. I don't know exactly who has this. Uh, but thank you, DP30, for uh, those numbers. So take a look. Um, you know, I think uh, let's go to LeBron. Let's bring that back here. So let's take a look at his salary. So this would be for the coming year, right? So escrow normal would be 10%. Escrow, sure you can see that you guys can see that. Okay. Escrow uh, based on reality. Let's go 45% just to be in the middle, 45%, um, 10%, okay. This is you know, destroyed by circumstance, and this is uh, a lot to put on players. So from the players' union point of view, like, fine, they owe this money, but the teams are still going to appreciate over time, and owners have the bankroll to survive it and if they don't and they sell the teams then they're probably going to make a billion dollar profit anyway so um they can survive this one way or the other uh, and lebron can certainly survive losing whatever uh but most players aren't lebron right like there's one lebron in in what 20 30 years of the nba anyone close to lebron uh very few players reach that kind of stratosphere uh, Kobe and you know, we could maybe say guys like Dirk uh, and there are franchise guys like that uh, Tim Duncan uh, but yeah uh, LeBron is someone who can handle it but someone who's in the league for one year or two years or four years most guys get four or five years it's 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 tough uh, 17 to 18 so thank you Corey so the who's reporting that oh that's for Shams okay thank you so Shams is saying uh, per Mark Scott, he's saying that they're discussing 17 to 18%. So what did we 
what we said 18%. So let's go with 18%. Um, okay, so what would that look like, right? So, and it's it's for two years, right? Wait, hold on, let me read, read closely. Players over the next two years with the hope that the withholding amount is down to normal 10% in 22, to right, okay, exactly. So let's clean this up a little bit. Let's get this. And what we're gonna do for the sake of argument is say that LeBron opts in. And I, I don't know if LeBron opts in, but if he resigns, the money's gonna be pretty darn close to this. In fact, if the cap is down, it, it's possible that his option, uh, here's a little something. Let's, let me think about that for a second. I think I've computed this once before. This is his option amount. Mm -hmm. And then if he, if the max, so we're, we're saying for 20, let, let's put the right year in here. That's 21, 22. And we're saying the salary cap would be that, potentially. I might be moving a little fast here, but I want to make sure we get this right. So, okay, so let's say oops, the cap is that. Just sort of brainstorming here. Okay, so we got the cap. So he would be eligible for 30% max for LeBron in... Wait, I'm off by a year. Wait, is that 21... Yep, 2122. Let me make sure I'm looking at the right thing. Don't want to rush and then get it wrong. Yep, that's definitely the player option year. Okay, so 30% max in for LeBron in 2021-22. Let's move this over here. That would be time. Oops, sorry, 35%. Okay, try that again. 0.35. Okay, so this is the max for LeBron. This is the option for LeBron. Okay, this is the league, and this is an important distinction. This is the league-wide max. This is the player option. But then we have the personal max, which is 105% of previous salary. In his case, that would be this times 1.05. This is the 105, so this is the personal max. So let's go with that. If LeBron opts out, he can get an extra $180,000. Uh, there are other reasons why, uh, pertaining to the uh, over 38 rule, where he, if he wants to take a longer contract, I think this is the only window he has to do so, uh, given his, uh, his age. We'll get into that some other time, some other stream. Uh, okay, so 40, let, let's use that number. Hope you can hear audio. Is that just, is it just you? Is audio down? Is anyone else having audio issues? Cause my meter says it's running and it seems like it's working. That's on his end. All right. You can all hear, we're good. Two years. Okay, cool. All right, chat, keep, keep uh, just a little bit, oh, cool deal. A little bit of feedback helps just so I know that I'm on the right track and if I'm confusing you or anything or if we're losing uh, any sort of uh, train of thought or you're, you're, you're not following me, hit me in the chat. If you see something I get wrong because again, I'm rushing uh, and I'm sort of winging it, I didn't prepare anything. This sort of just kind of hit us. I spent the last few days looking at the election footage and doing other work. Uh, okay, so there's the link again to the spreadsheet uh, where we're doing this, this work together. Uh, okay, so let's take a look. So. Uh, do we understand this is the the max for LeBron? So this is the max he can get. So we're going to assume he opts out. So now let's take a look here and, and compute the escrow. So 40. Now this is the question. This is the question. I, I wonder how they're going to do this. So let's put in the salary here at this number. This is LeBron opting out. LeBron new contract. I'm going to put new K, meaning uh, contract. Okay, so that's his money, right? So if we said escrow normal, it'd be point 0.1, right? And then if we said esco, escrow based on what escrow at what we said 18% okay 
Okay, so let's go over here, escrow. We're gonna scroll up escrow at 18%. And I don't know how they're planning on doing this, right? So I'm estimating here. So this is the um, compromise figure, Converse, compromise percent, okay? All right, cool. Lake Eric can hear now, everyone can relax. All good. Uh, escrow at 18% compromise, if I got, I think I got that right. Okay, so now let's punch that in here, oops. And then this would be that times 0.18. Okay, make sure we got it. Make sure I'm not missing anything. So 10%, yeah, that's about. Okay, so this, here's the question. So is this what they're factoring? Are they basically saying, does this mean basically an extra 8% in year one, eight percent in year two, and if we go to, um, I guess this is in Shams' Twitter, right? So Mark Scott gave it to us. So let's go to Shams' Twitter mm -hmm. and try to find it. Minimum, da -da 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 seven. Okay, there it is. Thank you for that. Okay, so let's copy that. Thank you, Shams, for that. Shams, good dude. Uh, appreciate. It. I, I've never worked with him at the same affiliation uh, but I've always uh, tried to be helpful and he's always been kind of cool helpful as well uh, mm -hmm. general rule of thumb I like to have is like let's w let's all help each other uh, learn and do a good job together and work together uh, because I don't like to look at it as a competition we're all sort of loving the game and enjoying the game and reporting on the game let's have some fun with it together so uh, I like working with Shams when, when we can. All right, so there it is. Seventeen to eighteen percent escrow of a player's salary over the next two years, with the hope the withholding amount is down to the normal. So to me, that's what that reads as is that um, that reads as basically an extra eight percent each year uh, for two years. And so if you think about it, the money coming back is higher in mass because the cap is higher. So that's not necessarily true. A higher cap doesn't mean that teams are necessarily spending more. It doesn't, it's not going to translate into, oh, the cap went up 2%. Therefore, every team spent more than 2% you know, more. Uh, some teams will spend above the cap. Some will be below. And it's, it's based on circumstances, based on many, many things. Uh, you can argue that it sort of sets a bottom line where if everyone goes to the cap, then everyone is spending at least 2% more. So from that perspective. But of course, players on multi-year contracts aren't going to suddenly get more, you know, bigger contracts. Like these are for players with new contracts. So, uh, but it does mean that basically the value of, I got to scroll down a little bit, the value of, the extra 8% is uh, more money in uh, with a higher cap. Does that make sense? Um, I don't know. Uh, Devin, I, uh, DP30, I guess I should call you. Devin, I don't, I don't, uh, no, I don't, I don't know where Shams gets his numbers. I know I publish my numbers on Basketball Insiders. You know, you can uh, find the link here and, uh, Let's jump over here. I don't use this angle enough. Let's take a look. So what we have here, and if you're new to, to what I do, um, and I know we have a lot of Laker fans. It's like, I'm going to grab the chat over here so I can see. I'm still learning how to use this thing. Okay. Uh, so if you want to take a look uh, at any of these teams, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to start uh, instead of Lakers. Let's go to Hawks. So you can take a look here. Everything is prepped in the body for uh, the next season based on what I n have known to this point. Excuse me. So, for instance, excuse me, uh, Jeff Teague, he's expiring after the season. 
Clint Capella is 16 million. There's some incentives, etc. Well, you can hover, by the way, if if uh, if you want, or you should be able to hover. There it is. So you see, there's. Oh, I don't know if that shows on stream or not. Hopefully it does. Uh, but you can hover over there. And there's a little more detail. Here's the depth chart, and I can project that they've got. Um, this is the Hawks that they've got up to 44.3 million dollars in cap room, which is massive and one of the top cap teams, or teams under the cap. Here's their draft picks, uh, all these little details. These are the rights that they have to each player. So if they keep Jeff Teague and his cap hold is on the books, then he takes up 28 and a half million of that cap space. That would dig into that 40, whatever, 44 million or whatever it was. Uh, and then they have things like qualifying offers to make players restricted. If they don't make these guys restricted, these offers won't happen. They won't be restricted. They need to negotiate a deal with John Collins this summer or let him go into restricted free agency the next year. Um, oh yeah, deep, you're, you're not a fan of that, hold on a second, so, let me ask this guy here, so, a uh, fan of, I'm asking DP3, what are you a fan of then, uh, what team, uh, and then there's more detail, I actually just have to take off Greg Foster, and if you're ever looking at these sheets and you see something wrong or changed, I know Greg Foster is going to Indiana, and that Nate McMillan, oh, the Warriors, that's fair, uh, DP30 is into the Warriors, that's, we can look at the Warriors too. Uh, Greg Foster is uh, heading over to Indiana, and then we need to add on to assistants Nate McMillan, which is kind of cool. Here's some of their front office. Uh, I do my best to get this fleshed out. It changes a lot. Um, all right, Slam and Jam is lifelong Clippers fan here. Very cool. Uh, Clippers are a very interesting team uh, this summer as well. Here's their future pick swaps. Uh, and then I list their deadlines. I find this to be really helpful when these decisions need to be made. Normally there's dates here, but we flat out don't know the dates. Although when we get back to our spreadsheet of, of notes, these are the kind of questions that they need to hash out to have a deal. When is the moratorium? Is there a moratorium? Uh, when are you gonna do qualifying offers? When do they happen? We have the draft as November 18th. Uh, they have to unlock the NBA. It's in a moratorium right now. So they have to unlock that at a certain point. Uh, before the draft so that teams can start to make trades around the draft Tr uh, Draft day is the biggest trading day of the year even more so than the trade deadline Maybe in some years not but uh, in a lot of years it, it is and some of those trades Aren't executed until July they're agreed to say June 25th and then executed July 6th after the moratorium uh, For instance, Anthony Davis uh, with the Lakers uh, is an example of that uh, There were a ton of I mean J July 6 was so busy in trades from what I understand, it took so long for the league to process all those trades, starting at the start of the day, that it bled over into the next day. So some of the transactions were actually on July 7th because they worked all day uh, and night. So, well, I, not until like, not like uh, till two, well, probably two in the morning, but maybe not like six in the morning, but at some point they probably called it a day. Uh, and then I list the transactions here. Uh, Javier, yeah, you know, if a team wants to talk, I'm, I'm willing to talk. It would be it would be a blast to work for a team if it was the right situation. Uh, so uh, David's saying, David Montrez is saying that the uh, moratorium is going to end on November 16th. So we'll jump back to Sham's uh, Twitter feed in just a few moments. So, yeah, normally there's transactions, but they, you know, we it, it starts over. Uh, I start my transactions over my transaction log as of the end of the previous season. Uh, so there's some bleed over. So after season, you have things like options and uh, uh, firings of coaches and GMs and hirings. Uh, I'll put those into the transactions, the draft, uh, and then the changeover to the new year. And then I go all the way through the end of the season, the trade deadline end of the season. And then I archive it. So if you want to take a look, we have archives as well. So this would be the Hawks archive. So you can see their salaries from the previous year. This would actually be this this current season that we're just ending. And it's basically the same information, except you now also have a li filled out list of transactions, which is quite a few. They were a very busy team. So that's kind of what I do and uh, a glimpse of what you can find and, and you know, if, where I know a lot of people use these as a reference. I know some other outlets borrow from it, um, which, you know, is a little bit of a sore spot. Uh, and some, some are great and publish their own or at least uh, have it behind a paywall or whatever. Uh, so I, you know, I know there's a lot of great people who get a lot of great information. And I, like I said, like with Shams, I view him as a, a colleague. I view anybody who's covering the NBA as a colleague. That's just how I approach things. Uh, 
And so let's work together. And, and uh, it's not about competition. It's like I, I'm there's enough room for a lot of us to do a lot of good work. Uh, it's what you do with this information. So here's the Warriors. Uh, what's interesting about the Warriors, of course, is this number right here. That trade exception. Well, but we're kind of getting off topic. So we're going to jump back. Uh, and then uh, we're going to jump back over here. Let me bring the, bring the chat with us. I got to learn how to do that a little bit better. So let's see. We're looking at Sean's. Now, what this might be not in a tweet, or maybe it is. I didn't say see any refresh. Okay. Uh, so nothing new here, but I, I guess it's in his article. Um, I'm not going to pull up the article here uh, because the athletic is paid content, and I can't show paid content, or at least I don't, I don't know if I can or can't, but that wouldn't be right uh, to stream paid content. So I wouldn't show something behind a paywall. Uh, but I'm going to take, uh, oh wait, here it is right here, duh, right in front of me. There it is. Okay, so uh, sounds like the moratorium is going to end on November 16th, which is awesome. means I've got 11 days to get ready for, uh, I've done most of the work I need to do. Uh, but let's get back into this math here. So to me it looks like, and we're going to just compute this for LeBron. Uh, we're looking at this. Oops, try that again. Okay, so 2020-21 at 18%. 2021-22 at 18% would be this number. Total for LeBron escrow. So if we look at what his money, because we're, we're kind of assuming like, let's say that the economy is back in 21, 22, but it's 2021, 20 this year where we're kind of screwed. So let's say that total for LeBron over two years equals this number. That is this divided by that percent uh, return for 2021 spread out over two. So what this is working out to be is that percent right there. So LeBron is basically giving up 36.9. So what we talked about earlier is that it, if they lose 40%, it would need to be about 40%. We don't know how much they're gonna lose. They don't know how much they're gonna lose. And they're gonna do everything they can to get it back. But money's gonna be lost. Uh, they went from, they, they cut 10 games. Just a quick note, why cut 10 games? Uh, answer, and this is in my opinion, and, and probably so, uh, educated opinion, is uh, the TV deals only require 70 to 72 games. Call it 70. The additional 10 to 12 games are expensive to produce and not worth it. <laughs> Uh, without fans a net loss of money in fact over the haul of a season they may lose money night on game nights but that's what TV is paying for so the teams you know they may actually not they're all going to get money from the national TV deal. So they're they're going to be getting money from that big piece of the pie plus their local TV deals. And that's paying for them to have their, their home games. But they're not going to profit at the home games like they would under normal circumstances based on 
uh, tickets, drinks, parking, um, concessions, uh, shirts, all that stuff. Um, so that's kind of the, the cutting part. How do you make up money? Um, and there's a question here that I think digs right into that. Javier has got right on the right track, right train of thought. What about the additional playing games for seeds 7 through 10? So I don't know how much money that makes up. That only makes up for, uh, you know, a few teams, right? Hold on a second. Thought I had to sneeze. Oh, goodness. All right. I guess I should have like a mute button or something like that, but I don't have that handy. Maybe I, you know, I could probably set one into my, I got a little toy here. I think I can probably set a mute button for the next time. I have to scream, uh, uh, rather uh, sneeze, something to program. All right. So, uh, yeah, the, they're going to come up with ways of bringing that money back. And that's really where I think uh, this is the variable, right? If we're looking at LeBron and they're going to take away that much money and they're going to lose 40%, it's not enough, right? And then it's also another issue. What if 2021-22 isn't profitable as expected and the cap isn't the right figure? Um you know, in other words, what of the purpose of the normal 10% escrow? So I think that's kind of, there's going to be some language. You know, my conclusion, there's going to be some language that can, one, increase escrow in year two, maybe, or instead of number one, add escrow in for year three. And maybe even year four. Uh, point being, there will be math. <laughs> Just like the election, there's math. You're gonna count numbers, right? Uh, there's going to be an exact number for income in, in 2020, 21. 2021, 22, 20, uh, 22, 23 is going to be an exact, oops, exact number for uh, player salaries, benefits, etc., for the same years, and there's going to be an exact amount that is deducted via escrow. I expect language to detail language to detail um, what benchmarks need to be reached to get back to normal. Okay, cool. So that's really the heart of it right there. Uh, we don't know what the next cap will be based on the language here. At a minimum of 2%. That doesn't mean 2%. Could be more. Uh, we kind of looked real quick at what the escrow would be for LeBron. And so it ended up being 36%. That's if it was 18. It makes sense, right? It's actually 36.9. Just like I said, the, the cap is increasing by 2%. In his case, his money is, is not going to be 2% more, but it, it's 18 and 18 is 36 plus an additional 0.9 in the case of LeBron. Uh, that could be different in different situations because everybody's money, if someone has a flat salary, it's going to be different. If they have a declining salary, it's going to be different. Uh, they're going to take all that money together. They're going to know how much money they lost. They're going to know how much they paid the players. They're going to know how much escrow was done. And whatever that plan is for this year is going to impact the next year. There'll be adjustments. But it sounds like what the league is trying to do, what, what the players are trying to do, is limit their their hits in a single year. So if we get to the end of this year successfully, and the num numbers aren't great, but they're they are what they are, then the next year is gonna take a hit. And but it's it, it might be a hit that is kick the can, delay it. You know, might be two years. So they're gonna 
Yeah, they're going to come up with as as good of a plan here now, so that this is satisfied. Right. I'll read it again, or at least the the important parts has tentatively approved. Right, and then additional details remain to be negotiated, and the NBA NBPA is confident that the parties will reach agreement on these remaining issues relevant to the upcoming season, and really the issues relevant to the upcoming season impact future seasons. So that's kind of the, the heart of, of what we're, what I was hoping to kind of think through via stream today. Uh, we can get into some other topics. Uh, so let's take a look here real quick in the chat. Um, so DP30 says, in my opinion, or in your opinion, do you see the NBA start exploring expansion to make up lost money? Funny you should ask that. Let's see if I can find it. I don't have the link handy, but Eric Pincus expansion bleacher report. Just because you asked. Of course, I got a link for that. Pop it in here. And I'll pop it into here. Is scroll down a little bit. All right, let's jump back to that. So, this is something I published in May, kind of looking ahead. And the question was, um, is expansion an answer? So, um, obviously, what was going on in May was uh, early and we didn't have enough information. Hopefully, I think I put my desktop audio down. If anything is coming through with audio, let me know. Um, like funky, like uh, pop-up ads or something. Uh, so kind of in a nutshell, and I recommend you just take a look at this. Um, the logic was the league is expanded. This is a quote I got from Larry, Larry Kuhn. Um, the league has expanded its line of credit. Teams are borrowing money from the league. If you added one team, well, that doesn't make sense. You'd add two, right? You want you don't thirty one teams doesn't make sense. Thirty two makes sense. Uh, each team joining would probably have to pay somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, two point one billion. Let's just call it two billion, right? Or let's let's call it two point one and double it, right? So you have two teams, four point two billion. And what we speculated on here in this article, what if the league kept 10% of that uh, for administrative fees and, and, and whatever? You're talking about bringing in $4.2 billion, 10% to the league, $126 million to each team is what that would look like. So that would be a huge help because instead of borrowing against the league, you're getting a big giant lump sum of money. That's a lot of money. Uh, and that's like net money. It's not like, you know, you're bringing in, let's say a team brings in a hundred million in the year, but their expenses are 85 to 90 million and they profit 10 million, or maybe they bring in 150 million and they spend 180 million and they lose 30 million, right? That's not what this is. This is actually, uh, just here's cash. Here's money. What do you lose though? Uh, the national TV deal is divided by 30. So if it was I'm just gonna make up a number if it was 300 mil, uh, three, 300 million I guess that's kind of ridiculous let's say it was 3 billion and it was divided by 30 each team would get 300 million does that make sense um, now it's divided by so let, let's take a look at that let's so it's not abstract and I'm not this is not the real numbers made up TV number 3 billion 1 2 3 1 2 3 one, two, three. I know, do enough zeros. Okay. Divided by number of teams. So that's a hundred million, right? So let's say that each team is getting a hundred million each year. So it doesn't matter if you're the Lakers or the Warriors, um, the marquee teams, right? The teams that are on uh, Christmas and are on Thursdays on TNT more than anyone else. If you are a team that is in a smaller market, uh, mm -hmm. they don't put you on much. You, you feel you got like a 
Memphis, the Jazz are good teams, so they get some coverage. But small markets, Milwaukee has Giannis. What's great about the NBA is they've discovered to his best of their ability some level of parity. Uh, but there are teams that don't bring in as much when it comes to ratings. I don't know where that is. Um, it let's call it you know, let's look at it this way. Um, hope that link works. Cool. So like, who would be a bottom team? So. Mm, Cavs this year. That's a fair one, right? Like, they were a marquee team, but LeBron left. Pistons, not a lot going on. Blake was hurt a lot. Hawks at least have Trey. The Knicks bring in money. That doesn't qualify. The Bulls probably bring in some. Hornets are a good example. You know, smaller-ish markets that are not really doing a lot. The Warriors, in an off year, probably still were uh, profitable to the league on some level. Those teams are still going to get the same amount of money as the top teams from that TV deal. But if we now have, we've expanded, this is every year, right? Well, now you get a bunch less, right? It's every year, you're getting $6.3 million less. So if you think about it, from our article here, I don't know if y'all can hear the noise in the background. I don't think they know I'm screaming. Streaming. Uh, so 126 million per team. 126. One, two, three. One, two, three. So this is how much money you get, right, as a team. <coughs> and let's say that you're losing six, two, five, zero. Uh, see, I, I made that's a made-up number. I need to find out what the exact TV number was. But let's say it was. Let's say it was 6250. This is a made up number. I guess the 126 is made up too, right? So uh, that's fair. So you're actually here. Let's do it this way. So there is a loss. It's not, you're getting, you're netting about 120. Although there are some mechanisms to kind of slowly bring in. The, the the expansion teams there there are things that uh, they don't get right away so it's not straight up math but uh, if we just divide this by equals this divided by that right it doesn't take long did I do that right equals this times ten right so equal this times 20 it's a little bit less than 20 or a little bit more than 20 <laughs> it's late I've been doing too much uh, CNN and all that stuff all right um, that was 20 so it does take it may take 20 years but basically you got nothing net over 20 years so how many teams are going to how many owners are going to sell way before then and are going to be happy to get that money and don't care about the future income of of what the next owner gets from the TV deal. You can see why owners would be, yeah, let's expand. So long answer to that question, um, but it's a good question uh, as far as expansion being an option. And, and there are, I wrote a series on this. So uh, if you look around, I have some other links. I think this was the first one. Um, the other one was, um, I don't feel like this is mine, but maybe, this is, I don't know, I don't write the headlines. Yeah, this is mine. All right, that's the thing is I don't write, I don't write the headlines. I don't know if you know that, um, but I write stories and then my editors write the headlines. And 90% 90, 90 of the time I don't say anything. Every so often I'll look at it and go, whoa, that's a little bit off from what I intended. Uh, where should the NBA expand? So if we take a quick look, pick look at quick look at this, um, I did some research, uh, and Virginia Beach. These are the uh, also rans, you know, kind of honorable mentions. Virginia Beach was a final candidate uh, for the Kings. Um, Pittsburgh, St. Louis, Jacksonville, Montreal, and even London have been sort of. Uh, 
floated through the years. Um, and then the question is, how? Like, is it teams are relocating? Oh, can you you can hear that noise? Can you? Yeah, the girls are downstairs. I got like I said, three daughters, thirteen, fifteen, seventeen. My wife, a little stir crazy through the shutdown and blown off some steam, obviously, from uh, from Zoom school and all that kind of nonsense they're having to deal with. Um, okay, so the challenge is, is like most teams are locked into their deals and there was some talk that maybe the Grizzlies could move, but the reality from what I understand is that uh, Robert Perry would have to actually sell the team if he wanted to move. He can't. He flat out can't move the team. He has to sell it. Uh, and it has to be a local team. They have the right of first refusal. And if they can't work a deal, then he could sell it to someone who might be able to move it. Uh, but relocating a team is very difficult. Uh, so I think expansion is really the answer. That's kind of why, like, it's not just, yeah, there could be another city that joins the, the NBA because of relocation, but the Clippers are not going to Seattle. They're going to Inglewood. Um, I don't see any team that's on that verge of about to move. But things change really quickly. Like Minnesota, they just got sold. Well, they're getting sold. Utah is getting sold. Uh, the Rockets were recently purchased. Uh, it, where we are now is where we are now. And you say, like, well, there's a lease. Does that mean that somebody buying a team isn't worth, who's willing to pay $2 billion, isn't worth paying uh, maybe a $500 million penalty to get out of a lease? They might. You know what I mean? So... Uh, you never know, but uh, Las Vegas has the arena. Uh, Mexico City would like one, but that creates some issues similar to what we're dealing with with Toronto. In this environment, I wrote this, when did I write this? And I guess I probably should have thought about this when I did write it in May. I don't like my own analysis here and saying Mexico City because of travel. I don't know. At the time, maybe we didn't really understand the scope of how long this was going to go. In May, we probably thought this would be over by July. <laughs> it's not. Um, so looking back, I say, yeah, Mexico City is probably not a great example because as it is, the Raptors probably can't even play in Toronto this year, which brings us to Louisville, which is where some people think they're going to go. Uh, there's a Dan Issel is a former NBA All-Star. He's got this NBA to Lou campaign. They're ready. They want it to happen. The challenge is more social um, with what's going on in the world with Breonna Taylor. I don't think the NBA is moving to Louisville flat out um, because of this. It, 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 the, the lack of, of, you know, we could, I don't want to get into the politics. So to simply say, uh, I happen to feel that, I happen to agree with the players, but their opinion of the lack of justice in that case, which I agree with. Personally, but I'm not going to apply to you guys because we're talking about sports. We're not going to get into politics. I think because of that perception, uh, that's out. Vancouver, same issue. Uh, I don't think the the league is going to expand out of the U.S. because of the pandemic. I don't think Canada wants uh, wants us there anyway right now. Just uh, until we're past this. So Vancouver, maybe expansion doesn't happen for a year or two. Then we could start talking about Vancouver and Mexico City. Same issue with uh, anyone anywhere outside of uh, the U.S. Uh, but some other options, Kansas City, Anaheim, San Diego, San Diego, Oakland, San Jose. Might be some uh, n negativity to the notion of giving California another team. Uh, and there's some issues with Anaheim in Balmer getting some sort of non-compete sort of stuff. Uh, because it's you know there's, there, are, there are some issues there. But I basically lumped in all of California. But you've already got the Warriors, the Kings, the Lakers, and the Clippers. Seems like it's unlikely to add another team to LA or rather to California and then we get to Mark Scott's choice and Corey's Corey McKinney's choice in chat um, and slam and jam your your kids are sleeping <laughs> yeah uh, I wish uh, it's almost 10 and um, the youngest should be going to sleep soon but this has been sort of an issue in the pandemic world it was already an issue because my oldest stays up till like my hours like midnight to well to more like 2 a.m. Uh, my middle one usually goes to bed around midnight in a normal world, although she's more on like the 2 a.m. cycle now, which is rough. And then my youngest is starting to go to bed around midnight, which is terrible because she still needs a little bit more sleep. Uh, yeah, no, Buffalo, I I, I don't think Buffalo happens because I th it's not that it's the closest U.S. city. This is DP30 who I believe. Are you in Buffalo? Isn't that where you are? 
Um, oh, thank you, LA woman. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree that it's a gorgeous family, but I will credit my wife for that. Uh, I just I did my part, uh, but the looks come on her side. So you know, I'm I'm hanging in. I'm hanging in. Not as much hair as I used to have, uh, but you know, hanging in. Uh, Detroit praying to land Lamelo to bring some viewers. Yeah, uh, I mean, Detroit's in a rebuilding situation. Um, just looking back at the chat before we continue. Mark Scott per CBA, the new teams won't contribute to BRI. For, right, but that's right. So, Mark Scott, I don't know what portion do the teams get of the TV deal. I They probably get the full portion. But I don't know. I, I just, without looking at it, expansion's very, com you know, the, the CBA is very complex. And I have not spent a ton of, ton of time on expansion. And I know that there are a lot of caveats to the expanding team that they don't get in the first year or two uh, in different ways. Like, they don't get the full salary cap. Uh, there's issues about like uh, what draft picks they can get. They can't get, I think, a top three pick, but that might. I don't know if that changed when they changed the lottery. Uh, maybe it's now top four picks. Uh, I'd have to double check that. That's definitely an area of the CBA that I've not looked at closely in a while. I looked at it very closely for this article or these this series, uh, but I didn't memorize all the details uh, because I didn't, you know. When we start digging in, it it's like uh, to actual practicality. Like if I heard that expansion was happening, I'd really dig in and and really make sure I got every little thing uh, figured out. Uh, but we talked about Seattle, uh, and yeah, the Seattle Sonics would be great to have back. It would be a blast uh, because that was a great NBA city, uh, and there would have to be realignment stuff. So, uh, like Seattle would be the Northwest Division. Why are the Timberwolves and Oklahoma City Thunder in the Northwest Division? Minnesota is not north. Oh, it is north. I'm sorry, but it's not west. Oklahoma, Oklahoma City is not north. And it's not west. Unless you're using like the Mississippi River as like some sort of arbitrary line being west. But then the Grizzlies are on it. This is from my article here. And then the Grizzlies are on the eastern bank of the river and reside in the Southwest Division. In other words, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't quite make sense. Uh, when we start looking at divisions, does this group by division? Yeah. Like Atlantic, right? You should be near the Atlantic. Okay. Uh, the Central. This isn't so bad, right? Southeast. Okay. Well, I mean, Washington is 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 Washington D.C. South? Anyone consider Washington D.C. in the South? I don't think so. Fine, but Northwest Denver. Northwest, Oklahoma City, Northwest, Denver, uh, Minnesota, Northwest, Portland, like, okay, fine. If we want to say Utah, I mean, even that's kind of, I don't know. Northwest is a little bit of a misnomer, but whatever, we'll call it that. Pacific is cool, except for Phoenix, which is not anywhere near the Pacific Ocean, but fine. Uh, Southwest, New Orleans is in the south. It's not in the west. Spurs, fine. Grizzlies, nope, not this is not in the Southwest. So there would be some realignment that I would welcome. And maybe they could rename these divisions a little bit more apropos. So we've kind of drifted off a little bit into another topic. Let's kind of clean it up and start to wind down a little bit. Um, see if there were any other questions here. Uh, so, yeah, like the problem with Buffalo is that... Um, you know, they're, they're going to want to reduce travel for teams. Like, I don't, this is the other part of the, the question. I don't, uh, you know, if we scroll back up to the, you know, all this stuff needs to be worked out. Like, is it going to be a bubble? Is it going to be multiple bubbles? How's, you know, there's some talk about, um, like, if you're going to play, um, whatever, four games, if the Lakers play the Rockets four games, if the Warriors play, um, the Grizzlies four games, if the Raptors play the Heat four games, that you play them in a row or like a baseball type series and knock them out. And so the schedule could look vastly different this year. And, you know, we can get into like what a 72 game schedule looks like. That's another interesting question. We can jump on for just a moment, kind of brainstorm. Oops. All right, let's take a look. Are there any other questions? Where does Toronto even play next season? So Slam and Jamie, we were talking about that. Like they were saying Louisville, and then DP30 suggested Buffalo. Uh, but the challenge is, is that I think things need to be centrally located so that they're uh, 
they reduce travel. And so, um, like, I guess here, let's go back to that. If we think about it by division, if they're going to play their division foes the most, it would make sense that they would be in that kind of tri-state area, which is like this, uh, or in the neighborhood of Boston. Uh, so I think it's going to be close to that. And you could, you know, somewhere that is at least in the realm of the central and southeast, so that um, they're not having to go across the border. So to say Buffalo, sorry, I, I just don't see it. Um, you worried LA won't allow fans back? I'm not up to date about any change rules. So um, yeah, Adam wants to know basically, are we going to get back into Staples Center? which would be great for me. I might be able to get back in the Staples Center before the fans as a media member, uh, which would be great to a point. Uh, but no, uh, I don't I don't think there's any time soon that fans will be allowed in. There's a limit, what is it, like 500 people? You know, I don't know what the California limit is, but I think it's 500 people. Can't be at an event. So if you think about like you have 15 players on a team, maybe 17 with two ways, coaches, people on the floor, mopping the floor, uh, referees, um, you know, TV, people doing the TV, doing, uh, I know they did a lot of robotic stuff, um, but uh, let's see what else. Obviously, the coaching staffs, trainers, uh, the, the table, you know, stats, announcer, all the things that you need. And then there's, just the general production crew and and people in the staff just to locker room attendant if there is such a thing i don't know how that works probably you know, someone all the things that you could possibly think of then some fans in the in the upper box in the press boxes you in the california you get to 500 pretty quick uh let's see prudential center in new jersey like i i wouldn't i could actually see you know I don't know what shape Prudential Center is in, but it's definitely in the, Mark Scott is suggesting Prudential Center. It's in the ballpark of, of like that's geographically correct. Uh, but I, I I wouldn't be shocked if it was like, you know, maybe they share an arena with another team, but then that team might feel like they don't have their own home, own home court. So I think, yeah, I, like you say, why don't they just play at the Brooklyn Arena if they're going to play at, at an older arena? Uh, so I don't, I don't know. I, I think they'll get, I think, I think the NBA will use this opportunity to try to test a new market. That's honestly what I think. So if they were thinking Louisville, which is still possible, it's because they're exploring that as an expansion market. So I don't think the NBA will just throw a team somewhere like Buffalo, which is not a uh, considered market, uh, not like uh, throw them in, in, in New Jersey where they just moved out of uh, a few years back not in the same building as the Nets where they're not going to have, it's not fair to the Raptors to be playing in someone else's arena. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so they'll use it as a test case for a new, so it might be one of those cities that we mentioned, uh, you know, Kansas City or whatever, but it doesn't necessarily be, have to be centrally located to a team in their division because all these teams play, all each, 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 uh, teams in the east so that's something i'm going to look at we're going to look at in just a second um uh, slam and jam says send new orleans and memphis east so there would be some potential that if you add a team it's going to depend on where that team is if you do in seattle then yeah somebody's going to go east and it's going to be memphis or new orleans based on their uh uh geographic location uh and you would think that a team would want to move east based on the uh just the current competition level. If you actually go back to about the year 2000, uh, it's been pretty, you know, well, I guess 1999 with the Spurs, right? Uh, since 99, it's been more dominant in the West. All right. So, and there's been, obviously LeBron was super dominant, uh, wherever LeBron was plus, uh, plus the West, the West was dominant. And then LeBron was dominant. Uh, let's see if there's any other comments here before we just get into one last issue, probably start to wind it down. Hypothetically, if Denver's scheduled to play four games in Portland in February where there's massive spike in cases, are they just going to go try? So uh, this is from generic FXT. Uh, 
No, you, you, we're we're past expansion. We're sort of discussing anything right now. Uh, we're sort of just in a general Q and A section here. <clears throat> so the question is, like practically, how does the season happen? I don't know. Uh, they're gonna have to do some sort of bubble, or I don't think bubble is the right word, but some sort of version of the bubble. I don't know what they're gonna do. But Orlando was spiking, not Orlando, Florida was spiking when they did the Orlando bubble. So they know that the science works if you follow the science, regardless of what's, if you're in a bubble, it doesn't matter what's happening outside the bubble. It doesn't matter if it's a little virus or a lot of virus, any virus is going to get into the bubble if it's not done properly. So I don't think you're going to worry about a spike or outbreak in the area because there were spikes and outbreak in Orlando, not in Orlando, in Florida. Like literally we sent the NBA to one of the worst hot spots at the time. And it worked out, right? Science. So, all right. So, what I just want to talk real quick, and probably starting to wind down the stream. Uh, Seventy-two games. What could that look like? And I, I, I think I might have covered this on either in a chat with somebody, or maybe I did it on a different different stream. But normally, uh, teams play each in conference team four times. Except, I think, except four, I think it's four, they play three. And I, I want to double check that. So, for instance, <clears throat> uh, home, this is a West team. They play, um, what is it? So there's 14 other teams, right? 14 other, other teams of which they play, is it 10 times four and is it four times three and then is it 15 in the other conference times two uh, in conference four in conf I, I may have a detail wrong we'll find out in a second oops This should equal 82, right? That's how you get to 82 games, right? <coughs> so we need to trim 10. We need to trim 10. Would that be this? Would it be that? Would that? Would would that be the answer right there? Pretty simple, right? Let's just merge that. Is this what we end up seeing? I don't know. I, I haven't had this conversation with anyone as to what they're thinking. Seems obvious, though, doesn't it? Doesn't that seem simple? <coughs> Instead of playing 10 teams four times, four teams three times, just play them once. Uh, once less, <laughs> play them three times. Uh, you know, the challenge is is travel, right? Do you want, let's go like, what is it? Uh, the Blazers are the m most northeast, right? Uh, the Blazers playing in Miami and Miami playing in Portland, right? That's a lot of travel. Uh, from a fan point of view, you would want to have fans to have the opportunity to have in, in Miami to see Damian Lillard one time. And you would want the opportunity for fans in Portland to see Tyler Hero and Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo one time. Uh, so there is a, a reason to make sure under normal circumstances that you get a one and one But if there aren't going to be fans in the building or, you know, that's kind of the question. So that's the variable we don't really know. Do they, you know, th this is really a question. Uh, do they want slash feel the need to have teams play uh, every team? 
and every team at least once in their gym or because we were talking about baseball like series <laughs> I, I don't know how that works fairly but um, so if let, let's go in conference and we'll just go uh, Warriors Wolves just randomly just a couple W teams I guess a W and a T team all right so uh, do they play three games total all in Golden State and is that fair to the Wolves to get no home games versus the Warriors and so what we're doing differently than we've ever done before is that so to reduce travel you are no longer uh, um, you're no longer playing a team tw two times at home to road but with no fans does it matter or do fans come back at some point and it does these are the kind of questions that they need to mull over right when they figure this out I don't know the answer I don't I'm just sort of brainstorming um, there was some talk and this is generic FXT you said I guess I'm wondering if the schedule can be flexible flexible schedule Um, how do the how do the teams feel about that? How do the networks? I bold that because that's really the questions feel about that. In some ways, the networks may love, and in some ways, and and hate it. Right? Like, how many times do we see like a bad game because you have? A team that was supposed to be good not be good and they've got it on TV uh, and there's nothing you know they don't have any alternate games usually they'll be like maybe three games on a Thursday for TNT two on network one not but um, they mm -hmm. switch it out a week uh, yeah, like a, a few weeks out. So uh, the crappy game is no longer TNT. And the uh, alt one got bumped up. So that kind of goes away. If you have a flexible schedule, you could negotiate with TNT and within limitations, like work out your schedule as you go at a certain point maybe two months out it's something uh, and if you know do, are is the priority an even schedule right another one could be this another one could be this you only play one time against the other conference or you play two times against the other conference, but only against eight teams. Okay, and let's do this. Let's do fourteen like this. Let's get rid of these. And there you have it. I'm just making up and making up stuff as we go along, right? What if you play? Um, all f in conference, everyone you get four. At a conference, you only play eight other teams, but you play them twice. Okay, so and it would be back to back. Uh, so you know, in our example, Blazers Heat, uh, and then Blazers versus seven other East teams, and then these are, let's say, both in Portland, and you would say like, um, so. Uh, Eight, so four, three others in Portland, um, four, four in on the road. So we don't know what, what they're going to do, but some thoughts. Uh, Cincinnati, um, you know, it, I don't know if the league is considering, if we're talking about expansion or if we're talking about the 
Raptors, Adrian. Adrian Quin, Quintanar. Quintanar. Uh, Cincinnati for expansion. I haven't heard much about Cincinnati. Could be. Um, you already have a team in Ohio. Uh, but it's certainly uh, a city that, you know, they have the Reds, right? In baseball. Um, or relocation temporarily. I think it has to go in, in hand in hand. Is it a, a city that they are worth it? Or, considering experimenting so if they're considering cincinnati for expansion then they would consider the raptors that's my hypothesis i don't know if it's true all right i guess i'm not uh, it's jacks what teams you think Lamelo going so you know we can definitely go through the draft before the draft on stream at some point we don't have a lot of time left depends how often i stream and i still haven't really figured out like how often you guys have the desire to to do this uh and uh, but it's it's you know I'm still start figuring it out. I'm not really a draft guy. Uh, I can do you know I, I don't know player personnel, uh, pro personnel, which is uh, I can discuss players in the league uh, with I feel like at least a uh, you know somewhat viable opinion uh, with at least an idea of, of what their game is, what their their ages and value and what they do, what they bring to a team. Uh, I'm probably a little bit less focused on analytics uh, than other folk. Uh, some are really into analytic. I'm not as much into like uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do what like Laker Film do Room does, like Pete Zayas, who's a good friend, uh, who can like break down every little minute detail of like um, you know what every every you know, this person has um, you know their footwork and stuff like that. I, I uh, so I. You know, my my expertise is really this stuff, the salary cap, and I understand player value pretty well, which I think is an important part of that. Uh, but I would, if I were running or working in an organization of any kind, I would want to work with really good analytics people. I would want to work with really good player personnel people, and sort of enable them to you know reach their goals. I think that's like the role of the capologist is to um, like be a conduit uh, to help them understand uh, and and come up with ideas. And to you know, take a vision of what the team would want, and then maybe give ideas and concepts that that team didn't have because they hadn't thought about it from a salary cap perspective. Um, so when we ask about Lamelo, I don't know. The draft is a wild mess. There's been buzz. I think Kevin O'Connor was saying he's not interviewing interviewing very well. Sometimes people use guys like me and Kevin to put that out there because they want their guy to fall to a certain team or maybe he's just flat out not interviewing well i don't know uh but he's a neat player and i'm curious to see what he looks like in the league uh micro havoc says john hollinger uh, I, I like john i've worked with him again similar to like shams not we've never worked for the same outlet but even when he was with the grizzlies uh we'd i'd see him at stable center uh and we'd chat and catch up he's a good guy uh always value talking hoops with him he said maybe eight games with each division rivals to reduce the travel in the in article. Yeah, on the athletic. Yeah, you know, it's the same same concept, right? Like so um, they could do, as we said, they could just, you play every team in conference. They could do extras in division. So, you know, there's probably about, we could probably come up with 20 different scenarios. Ton of ways to do this. Uh, and it goes back to the, the, the 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 disclaimer in the initial announcement that I you know, we started with from the MBPA that you know they have other things to figure out. Lamelo equals Gen Z gold mine for viewers. Yeah, um, definitely a young guy and definitely like a modern era era guy. Guys who were born in the what, the two thousands, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What's his birthday? Uh, Lamelo Ball. I guess I should put in birthday. Yep, born two thousand one. So. Uh, I've been covering since 2002 in person on some level or another. So, I mean, I've been I've been going to games. I was actually covering, but like officially covering for an outlet since 2002. So almost all of LaMelo's life. So kind of crazy. Uh, so I guess a um, couple other points of business to say. Um, scroll back up here. Uh, if you have some time, I'll throw this out into the chat one more time. First of all, we'll start with, <clears throat> we're kind of winding down the stream here. So if you didn't follow this as we went, this is the link to the Google Doc where uh, the, this where all the 
all the homework is, right? If you want to actually look at some of these numbers, you can look at them and uh, see how I got from you know point A to point B to point Z. Uh, this is the, oops, was that, yeah, that was right. Okay, so that's that. Then there's this. This is the Discord invite. It is only good for 24 hours uh, from when we started it. So I don't, I've lost track. I need a timer to keep track of how long my streams are because I have no freaking idea. Um, and then there's this, which is uh, helpful if you can. Uh, Venmo Patreon. At some point, I'm going to make uh, the Patreon the gate to the Discord channel. Uh, so if you get in now, you're in. You're not going to be kicked out. So you're never going to have to pay any money on my Patreon to be part of the Discord. But down the road, I, I'll, you know, I might do a gate like you know, five bucks a month or something like that, or ten bucks or something like that. I forget. It's up. It's up there on the Discord already. But I haven't really. I, I've been pretty generous with getting people in just to get the Discord conversations going. Uh, we've had a lot of fun in there, uh, especially during key times and. Uh, you know, playoffs, and when I wrote all the expansion stuff, I, I workshopped a lot of those ideas with some of the folks in Discord. So, uh, and then Venmo would be great, or if you feel like you can contribute something for, uh, you appreciate the, hey Mark, thank you, thanks, uh, thank you sir, appreciate that you appreciate it. Um, if you feel like you want to contribute, uh, that'd be great. Uh, trying to pay for. Uh, my, my youngest is going to start going to tournaments again with her team. Social, it's not socially distant, but with masks. And it's a whole thing. It's a whole process uh, where we make it safe. But we're going to try to do some of those. And uh, that's going to be fun. So I'll try to, in a future stream, share a little bit of that. Uh, but uh, it's expensive raising kids. That's all I'm trying to say. Uh, so do what you can. Uh, if you can't, and just being a participant, uh, please share. Um, the the stream to others let them uh you know share share what i do so that i can get some more people oh i'm supposed to say like and subscribe right I'm still new to youtube so like the video the stream subscribe to the channel and then hit the notification bell so that you know when i'm putting out content i am well now that the season's rushing back we'll see how that's how much time i have but i would like to make 10 minute videos or five minute videos that just are just content that aren't stream, but that hasn't happened yet. Uh, and I'm still trying to rework a little bit of how I stream and the, the, give it a little bit of a facelift and that sort of thing. Uh, but whatever you can contribute would be great. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, we're, it's not even in Orange County. I don't even think Orange County is open. It's like, it's county by county. There's no games in LA County. I don't think there's any games in o Orange County. I think they're like, they're, we're going to have to travel pretty far. So, um, yeah, uh, I don't know where the I don't know. I have some information on where these tourneys are, but they're they're not in OC and they're not in uh, in uh, in LA County for sure. Uh, but it's I, I'm really excited to see her play. My daughter, uh, my young, my middle one plays in high school, so she's just doing training and trying to stay ready. Uh, and the season, is, if you know, like LAUSD, there's going to be two seasons. Uh, I guess CSF seasons where it's like season two is basketball don't know when it starts i think it's like maybe march or february or something like that i think march but my youngest is uh with the au team and uh she's been working since uh like uh since the shutdown well she took about a month off uh, she always takes a month off after a season and then uh she was on zoom and then eventually socially distant practice with masks then gradually over time uh they were able to do a little bit more than that um but really mostly uh, really you know, diligent, safe as best possible. No incidents of anything bad. Uh, but it'll be great to see them play. Uh, the love of the game is is you know universal, and whether it's the NBA or the you know youth girls level, it's it's a blast. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to the season. I'm excited that we're on the precipice of it returning. That word tentative is never a happy word, but um, when we were all sort of wondering about next season. I did have some conversations with some people who were pretty optimistic that they would get to another season uh, and that they'd work out the salary cap. It'd probably be flat. And I think that's where we are. So uh, I hope we learned something today. <clears throat> I learned something. I wasn't sure where we were going to go with this and definitely learn like this stuff here, this 36.9% idea of what LeBron might be paying over two. I could see how that's not enough. I could see it extending to a third year legit. 
Uh, but I think that's about it. Um, follow me on Twitter at Eric Pincus, uh, Venmo, Patreon, uh, check out the discord and share this with your friends. And I appreciate y'all, uh, hit me up on Twitter, say hi, and uh, we'll stream again soon. Thank you.